Hey, what's up guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in today's video, I just want to respond to a question that comes up from time to time, and that is where people say, hey, does Zombie Guitar work for acoustic guitar? And the answer is yes, absolutely. So Zombie Guitar is a music theory for guitar website. My whole YouTube channel is all about music theory for guitar. So if it is a guitar, then the answer is yes. So this is a guitar. So yes, Zombie Guitar will work for this. So that demo that I played in the beginning, I just said, hey, I'm just going to write a little thing on the guitar. I'm going to write a little solo to it. I'm going to play some movable bar chords, all the same stuff I talk about in all my videos. I'm just going to do it on an acoustic guitar just to kind of show you. Yes, you know, all of the stuff works for acoustic guitar. Absolutely. So in this video here, I'm just going to break down exactly what I did in that demo in the beginning of this video. So that way, if you want to just play exactly what I played, you can do that. That demo is actually a little piece of an original song that I wrote like three years ago or something like that. So if you want to check out my original, I'm going to chuck that at the very end of this video. So if you stick around to the end of the video, you can listen to my original song. The acoustic bit at the end of the original song is actually slightly different than what you saw in that demo. But I just wanted to make this into like a simplified beginner's version of stuff you can do on an acoustic guitar by applying basic music theory concepts. So with that said, let's get into the lesson. So step one is to play some chords. So more often than not, when you play chords followed by other chords followed by other chords, usually the chords are going to be all part of the same key. Not always. Of course, you can throw in out of key chords. You can play chords at random and stuff like that. But usually you're going to find that chords that are contained all in one single key are going to be the chords that tend to sound good together. And this demo that I played in the beginning is no different. All of the chords that I played were all from the same key except there is one single out of key chord and we're going to talk about that one in a minute. So let me just give you the tabs for the chord progression now and then we'll talk a little bit about the theory behind it. All right, so all of these chords are from the key of G major. You could also say that all of these chords are from the key of E minor. That's a relative major minor pair. That means they share the same chords as one another. They also share the same notes as one another. The G major scale is the same seven notes as the E natural minor scale. That's what a relative major minor pair is. So we're just going to number these chords based off the major perspective of this key. We're just going to say that this is the key of G major. So we're going to number our chords as if G major was number one. In any given key, when viewed from the major perspective, your 1, 4, and 5 chords are always going to be major, your 2, 3, and 6 chords are always going to be minor, and your 7 chord is always going to be a diminished type of chord. I did use one out of key chord here, and that is the 3 chord. Instead of using the diatonic minor 3 chord, I made it into a major 3 chord. This is very, very common. I did a whole video about this two, three, four years ago, something like that. It's called My Favorite Chord to Use or something like that. I'll post a link to that if you want to check it out. That's simply about taking the diatonic minor three chord and making it into a major three chord. Let me just give you a quick comparison of what these two sound like, B minor versus B major. So I'm not going to play the whole chord progression all the way through. I'm just going to play the one, one little piece of it. So it's... So I've replaced the B minor with a B major. So E minor, G major, B major, C. So the difference between the B minor and B major. All right, so hopefully you can hear the difference between this minor three chord, which is the diatonic chord, versus major three chord. So that was the one thing I did. So not only did I change the minor quality of this three chord to major, but I also made it into its seventh form. So this major chord played in its seventh form becomes what is known as a dominant seventh chord. It's not a minor seventh chord. It's not a major seventh chord. It's a dominant seventh chord. It's the major part of the chord that gives it its particular quality. The fact that it's major instead of minor is really what gives it the sound that you're getting. Making it into a dominant seventh chord is just adding icing onto the cake. So instead of playing a B major like this, you could replace it with a B dominant seven as well. And there's a few other ways to play a B dominant seventh chord. This is just one way to do it. That's one way to do it. I just played the B seven like this instead. This is just an, an alternative way to play a B dominant seven chord. 
either one would work though. All right, so I just wanted to spend a little bit of time of talking about that one particular chord that is very, very common. The minor three chord becomes major, and then if you want to play it in seventh form, it would be a dominant seventh chord. Super common. All right, so what I'm talking about right here, this is fundamental stuff. You take a key, and in that key, you're going to find three major chords, three minor chords, and one diminished type of chord. So this is all summarized and put into a nice little cheat sheet on your circle of fifths. So we're in the key of G major. The relative minor of G major is E minor. You find your G major on the outer circle, you find your E minor on the inner circle. That lets you know that that's a relative major minor pair. You then look at the grouping of six that surrounds that relative major minor pair. And those are your three major and three minor chords that are found in that particular key. Those are all the chords that I was using for this entire song. That's the key that we're in. And then we just made that one alteration to that diatonic minor three chord, the B minor chord. We made it into a major three chord. So your three chord can always be found within the grouping of six for the key that you're playing in, in the inner circle clockwise position. And it's all right there. That's your little cheat sheet, the circle of fifths. So that's, we used all those chords. I used an E minor chord. I used a G major chord, D major chord, C major chord, A minor chord, and then replace the B minor chord with the B major chord. So all of these chords that are found right here in the grouping of six, they were all used in this demo. Step two is write a little lead. So how do I write a little lead? Well, I look at the chords and I say, what key do the chords put me in? They put me in the key of G major or the key of E minor. And once I have that information, I say, okay, I'm going to use either the G major scale or the E natural minor scale as my soloing framework to write my lead. The G major scale and the E natural minor scale contain the same seven notes. I just used one little pattern. You could play that scale across the entire neck of the guitar if you want. It's just seven notes. Those seven notes are found all up and down the entire neck of the guitar, and they form all these different patterns and stuff like that. But I just used one pattern. I used pentatonic position number one for this key. So how do you locate where pentatonic position number one is for the key that you're playing in? Major scale root, minor scale root. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it on the note G on the low E string, or I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on the note E on the low E string. So I'm going to do that right up here. So major scale root, minor scale root. Pinky goes on the note G right there, 15th fret of the low E string, or index goes on the note E, 12th fret of the low E string. So there's my pentatonic position number one for this key. You can also find your pentatonic position number one for this key down in the open position. You could put your pinky on the note G, third fret, and you wouldn't really be putting your index finger on the E because the open string is the E, but your pentatonic position number one is also found down here. But for this solo, for this demo, I played it up here in this pentatonic position one. The pentatonic scale is just five of the seven total notes of the key scale. So what you see here is just five notes so far, so we need to fill in the remainder of the key scale with the missing two notes. So now we have our full seven note key scale here, and that's the soloing framework that I used to solo over that chord progression. So if you want to follow along and play exactly what I played, here's the tabs for that. Step three is to pay attention to chord tone targeting. So the entire demo, it's just taking place right here in this little soloing area. It's just one single pattern. This is pentatonic position number one for this key that we're playing in. There's only seven notes that we're dealing with here. So some notes are going to sound better than others depending on what chord is happening in the rhythm section. So as the E minor chord is occurring, the notes E, G, and B are going to sound the best. As the G major chord is occurring, the notes G, B, D are going to sound the best. As the C major chord is occurring, C, E, and G are going to sound the best. Over the D major chord, D, F sharp, and A are going to sound the best. Over the A minor chord, A, C, and E are going to sound the best. And then we have our three chord, the one that we made the alteration to. So the reason that that chord is out of key is because it contains one single out of key note. So a B minor chord contains the notes B, D, and F sharp. All those notes are part of this key. A B major chord contains the notes B, D sharp, and F sharp. That D sharp is out of key. Taking a minor three chord and making it into a major three chord has a particular sound to it. That is a direct result of taking that D, which is the third of the B minor chord, and making it into a D sharp, which is the third of the B major chord. 
So that one little alteration changes the sound drastically. All right, so that's just one thing to consider. It's one out of key note, which is to be played over that one out of key chord. And then the fourth and final thing I want to talk about is just taking all the chords in the chord progression and then converting them into their movable bar chord form. So when I started out the demo, I played everything in their open position. That just means that open strings are also part of the chord. So I play this E minor chord here, and we have some open strings in here. We play this G major chord, we have some open strings. You know, all these chords have some open strings involved. So we just took all of those open position chords and we just converted them into movable major and minor bar chords. So the way that you do that is if you know your notes on the low E string or on the A string, you can play any major or any minor bar chord anywhere on the neck of the guitar. All you have to do is just know if it's a major or a minor chord that you're playing and then know where the root of that chord is on either the E string or the A string, and then just apply the appropriate shape. So major chords rooted on the low E string look like this. Minor chords rooted on the low E string look like this. Major chords rooted on the A string look like this. Minor chords rooted on the A string look like this. So those are the four shapes that you have to worry about. So the chord progression starts out with an E minor chord. So I'm just gonna locate the note E on the A string. So right there, seventh fret, we have an E. So it's minor, so I'm gonna apply the minor chord shape. So here's what a minor bar chord rooted on the A string looks like. So here's our E minor chord. And I just took the high three notes of this shape. You can play the shape in full or you can just play like the high three strings if you want just to make it easier. And that's all I did. So that was what I did for the E minor chord. For the G major chord, I located the note G on the A string and then I applied the major chord shape for a chord rooted on the A string. So here's a G right there, 10th fret major so apply the major bar chord shape so here's your g major chord and again i just played the high three strings if you don't want to play the full shape you can just play the high three strings and that's fine so here's your g and then for the d major chord i chose a shape that was now rooted on the e string so i found the note d rooted on the low e string and then i applied the major bar chord shape for that so here's a D right there, 10th fret of the low E string. Here's the major bar chord shape for, for major chords rooted on the low E string. And again, I just played the high four strings this time. So I played the D major chord like this. For the C major chord, I did the same thing. I found the C rooted on the low E string. So here's a C right there, 8th fret of the low E string. I applied the major bar chord shape, which is like that. I again played the high four strings. Alternatively, you could play the D major and the C major chord, or any of the other chords for that matter, rooted on the A string. So instead of playing the D major here and the C major here, towards the end, I played the D major here, rooted on the A string. So here's your note D, fifth fret of the A string. Apply the major bar chord shape for a major chord, rooted on the A string. So here's D major, just playing the high three strings. You have that, here's a D major chord here. C major chord, same thing. There's your C right there, third fret of the A string. Here's your major bar chord shape. Just play the high three strings. There's your C major chord. Then we have two more chords that we didn't talk about. We have the A minor chord, and then we have the B major chord. So, uh, you know, instead of playing the A minor chord down here in open position, you can say, oh, there's an A there, right there on the fifth fret of the low E string. Build your minor bar chord shape rooted off the low E string, so here's an A minor chord. Playing the high four strings of it, you would have that, so here's an A minor chord like that. And then we just have that B major chord now. So uh, you could start here on this B, seventh fret of the low E string, apply the major bar chord shape. So here's a B major chord like this. And then you could always reduce that to the high four strings, so here's a B major chord as well. Or you could come to this B right here, second fret of the A string, and then apply the major bar chord shape rooted on the A string. So here's a B major chord like this. And of course you could always reduce that to the high three string, so this is also a B major chord. All right, so it's all just about knowing the notes on your low E string and on your A string so you can apply these movable bar chord shapes. And then it's just about memorizing the four shapes which you can move around. You have your major bar chords rooted on the low E and your minor bar chords rooted on the low E string. And then you have your major bar chords and your minor bar chords rooted on the A string. So you memorize those four shapes and you can move them around anywhere and you can play any chord progression in any key. All you have to do is just know the root note location and then know if the chord is major or minor. And that's all I did there. So, know your fundamentals, it works on an acoustic guitar, it works on an electric guitar, 
It's all the fundamentals. It's all about understanding this fretboard. All right, so thank you for watching. With that said, here's my uh, original song from a few years ago. Thank you for checking it out. See you next time.